This is 13.3 breathing mechanism notes. The essential question is, what causes pressure differences inside the lungs and the atmosphere that allows inspiration and expiration? There is a difference between respiration and breathing or ventilation. Respiration is the process of exchanging gases between the outside of the body and bringing it in and delivering it to or um, carrying the oxygen to the cells. Breathing or the ventilation is movement of air in and out of the lungs. It has nothing to do with gas exchange. It's just the movement of air. We call in biology, we also heard of cellular respiration that occurs in the mitochondria of the cell, and that is what the oxygen is required for. Um, here where you see the C6H12O6, that's glucose or food, we, what we commonly call sugar, and then the oxygen that is provided by the respiratory system, that provides carbon dioxide that we breathe air, water, and the main important thing is the energy, ATP, that you produce. That is the whole purpose of needing the oxygen is to release the uh, uh, energy from the food we eat. The form of oxygen that's carried in the blood, once the hemoglobin, which is the part of the red blood cells that carry the oxygen, then it's termed oxyhemoglobin. So the hemoglobin of red blood cells acts as a magnet that holds onto the oxygen and then holds onto it until it is needed um, and is released into the tissue cells. Internal respiration, on the other hand, is the exchange of gases between the blood capillary and the body tissue, the body cells, the cells where it is needed for the cellular respiration take, to take place. Pulmonary ventilation, again, is the movement of air in and out of the lungs, and what causes the movement is determined by the pressure differences. So the atmospheric pressure stays pretty much constant at... 760 millimeters per mercury. The only pressure that we can control is the pressure within the lungs. So when the pressure is lower in the lungs than the atmospheric pressure, then the air is going to flow in. When the pressure inside the lung is higher than 760 millimeters per mercury, then it's going to flow out. Note that from physics, you learn that there is a inverse relationship between pressure and volume. When there is an increase in volume, then the pressure goes down. Vice versa, when the volume decreases, then it's going to increase the pressure. And that is the principle that allows the air to move in and out of the lungs. When the volume inside the lungs or the chest cavity decreases, that's going to increase the pressure inside the lungs and it's going to be greater than the pressure, the atmospheric pressure on the outside. That means the air is going to move out. When the the volume of the lungs is increased, that's going to decrease the pressure inside the lungs. That's going to be less than the pressure, the atmospheric pressure. That means the air is going to flow, air flow in. So pressure gradient is another term for differences in pressure between the atmosphere and the lungs. And so again, when the pressure of the lungs are less than the atmospheric pressure, then the air is going to go in. That's inspiration. When the pressure inside the lung is greater than the atmospheric pressure, then you're going to have expiration, which is uh, air moving out of the lungs. So again, the 
atmospheric pressure stays constant and the only thing you can change is the pressure of the thoracic cavity, the pressure inside the lungs. And so in inspiration again, remember the pressure inside the lungs is less than the atmospheric pressure. In order to create that, you want to increase the size of the thoracic cavity. That's increasing the volume of the thoracic cavity. Then that's going to decrease the pressure inside the lung. The way you do that is that the diaphragm contracts and it moves down. And the ribs move, flare out, and then the sternum, which is the breastbone, that is on the up, that connects the ribs on the front of the chest, that moves forward. So the three areas that you can control the size or the volume of the thoracic cavity is that the rib cage, when the intercostal muscles contract, will make it move out. They swing out. And the ribs, also the rib cage, move up. They flare out. And then the sternum move forward. At the same time, the diaphragm contracts and moves down. That's increasing the floor. And so the entire space inside the thoracic cavity is increased. That increases the volume. That therefore then decreases the pressure. And then the air goes in. In forced inspiration or inhalation, there are certain muscles that have to activate besides the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles. Those are scaly muscles, which are on the front of the neck. So is the sternocleidomastoid muscles and the pectoralis minor muscles, which is our, your tiny little um, chest muscles. Those are activated when you are trying to get more air into your lungs than when um, during a normal breathing. The Expiration or the movement of air out of the lung is a passive process, which means all you have to do is relax the diaphragm and relax the rib muscles, the intercostal muscles. That's what that's going to cause the um, lungs to go back to its normal size. Now, the more healthier the lungs, then it's going to have more elasticity. That means it's going to bounce back. But if the lungs are damaged by disease or age, then it's going to lose its elasticity and then it's going to be less effective getting the air out. So again, in expiration, the space or the volume of the thoracic cage or thoracic cavity goes down. That's going to increase the pressure of the lungs. That's going to be high, uh, higher than the atmospheric pressure, which means that the air is going to flow out. So the intercostal muscles relax. That's going to bring the rib cage down and in. The sternum is going to move back forward. The diaphragm contract um, relaxes, and it's going to move up back to its normal size. And then the ribs are coming down inward by the um, action of the intercostal muscles are relaxing. That's going to decrease the volume of the thoracic cavity. That's going to increase the pressure inside the lungs, which is going to be higher than the pressure of the, the atmospheric pressure. Then the air is going to flow out. Forced expiration requires um, different sets of muscles, specifically the intercostal muscles uh, contract more vigorously than normal, and the abdominal muscles. Remember the four abdominal muscles, the rectus abdominis, external obliques, internal obliques, and transversus abdominis activate, and that's going to flow, uh, allow for greater force that's going to force air out of the lungs. 13.3 notes homework. Number one, what happens to the rib cage, diaphragm, and the size and pressure of the thoracic cavity during inspiration? That's be pressure. Number two, name the muscles involved in forced inspiration and expiration. Number three, how are internal and external re respiration different?